In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the concept of hardened normals, and I'm going to show you when to use it and when not to use it. We're going to start off with a really simple example of a simple piece of geometry that's had the fillet tool applied to it, or the bevel tool applied to it with multiple segments. The first thing that we want to do is note that it's got shade auto smooth turned on, so it smooths the normals. Anytime you're working with 3D, you're always working with flat faces. We use this shading trick called surface normal smoothing in order to give it the appearance of smoothing. And that's sort of where this hardened normals function comes in. There's a slight gradient blending into this long flat face over there. And if we look at this from the side, we come into edit mode, we can see that in fact, all of these are just flat faces. Well, this is one of the challenges with using the bevel tool is that it may not produce the correct geometric configuration in order to prevent surface normal blending from coming into your flat areas. You don't want the appearance of shading in those areas because it's blending this angled face here into this long flat face. So there are a couple of ways that we deal with it, but there is this specific feature called hardened normals that you're going to find in some of the tools. So if we come over and take a look at the options way down here we can see normals and we're going to turn on let's just turn on face normals for right now and we can see that for each of these flat faces there's a line that comes out 90 degrees to each of those flat faces well face normals are used to calculate what are called vertex normals so if we come over and we turn on vertex normals let's turn off face normals vertex normals are a composite of the surrounding face normals. So this is an average of the normal for this face and this face. That's easy. That's very easy to understand. When we come over here and we look at this face, it is an average of the surface normal for this long polygon and this short polygon. It's an average right there. And so it's that surface normal blending that gives us the appearance of curvature. So we have a feature. Let me rotate this and I'm going to turn this into a shaded view so we can see we have a feature whereby we can take this edge, bring up the context menu, and we can mark it as sharp. And in fact, I'm gonna let me move this over so we can see this. I want you to watch this, this face right here. So let me bring this up. We're gonna do a mark sharp. And you see how shading changed right there? So let's press tab and leave edit mode, and we can clearly see that there is a break in the shading. So let's come back over here and look at this. The vertex normal is still the same, but we have a break in shading. So when we come back up and we take a look down here at the bottom, there's a thing called display split normals. And I'm going to turn off the vertex normals. And we can see that what it's done is it's shown us that there is actually a split in the vertices right there. And this is what indicates that it's a hard normal. That can be useful under some circumstances, but it's not going to be great from the standpoint of continuity of shading. What do we do with this? One of the ways that we can handle this is to put another row of polygons right here. So if I were to come over and add another row of polygons right there, and I come over and I take this and I clear sharp, then the shading breaks right here. So this polygon acts as a boundary between the flat area and the curving area, and the gradient happens here between the surface normals. So when we come over and we take a look at this, there's no longer a, any kind of broken normals or split normals as they call it, so the shading happens from here to here. So in practice, this is something that you want to take into consideration when you're doing hard body modeling. But I want to give you all of this preamble because this foundation is going to help us when we get just dive in really quick into our widget modeling. So let's look at another option here. Let's look at another piece of geometry. I'm going to press tab and we're going to leave that and we're going to turn on this that has that 90 degree angle. So this is where we're going to examine hardened normals. Let's come in, press the tab key. We're going to select this and we're going to come over to the bevel function, give it four segments with the shape of four, which is a perfectly circular bevel. And let's come in and do something similar to what we already have set up. In our options that we see available, now we have this hard normal function and watch what happens when I turn that on and then off. So this is doing something unique and you can see up here and you can see down here what's happening is it's making those flat areas be completely flat. 
But if I close that down and then I press the tab key, you're going to note that we don't see a hard boundary right there like we did when we simply made that edge a sharp edge. So something unique is happening right here. Let's turn this off. And now we're going to press the tab key and we're going to come back in and we're going to take a look at this. So we can see the same normals. These are the default normal vertex normals. But when we come in now and we take a look at the split normal function, now we see something unique. We see that this vertex normal here at this boundary that has been made hardened, quote unquote, matches the vertex normals of the flat area, not of this curving polygon. So it's basically doing a shading trick where it's taking the vertex normal that should be there and simply bending it to match the vertex normal of the flat area. That's all it's doing. So if we come back over here now and we turn on both of these at the same time, we can see here's the original normal and it's simply been replaced by the flat normal of the flat face. And that's how you get shading information to look like it's blending correctly from a curving area into a flat area. This is neat because that kind of solves a problem of having to put extra geometry right here, but there's a big caveat to that. There are times when you want to use it, times when you don't want to use it. Let's come over and take a look at the geometry data over here. So normals is up here, and then we come down to geometry data, and we're going to note something. It says clear custom split normals data. Let's press the tab key and leave edit mode. Well, what does that mean when you click that hard normal function? It actually bakes in custom shading information. The challenge that we run into when using that is that as soon as you start further modeling the geometry, you can begin to get a mix of pre-encoded vertex normal data and auto-generated vertex normal data for vertices that are newly generated from the modeling process. And you can begin to end up getting weird artifacts if you go down that route. So this is where you want to be careful. So let's come over here and let's clear custom split normal data and we can see what's happening. If I press the tab key, you can see that it has encoded this edge and this edge as marked sharp edges, but they no longer are, are encoded with that custom split normals data, which will override the auto shading vertex normals. This leaves us with a conundrum. Well, when do we use it and when don't we use it? We're going to go through a little widget modeling process where I show you when to use it and when not to use it. So I did three shorts modeling this up to this point. You can watch those or you can just start here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, press Shift and S, and I'm going to move the cursor to that location. Let's come over to the rotation tool, rotate the view. But I want to rotate these, so we need to move the pivot point. So I'm going to press the period key, and we're going to move the pivot point to where the 3D cursor is. And then I can begin rotating that. Press the control key to rotate that down to exactly 90 degrees. So this is where we're going to first look at a situation where we could consider hardened normals. So we're going to come over to the bevel function. Let's think about this. So we could come over and, and I could do four with the shape of 0.5, which is the rounded default. And we could do this and then we could come in and we could give it hardened normals. But this is a situation where you probably wouldn't want to do that because we're going to probably end up doing further modeling that will cause an interruption with because it's giving us a mix of auto-generated normals and baked-in normals. And you, you kind of want to avoid that. So this is a situation where, in fact, what I'm going to do is set this to a value of 2 and 1. And that's going to allow me to first put in a boundary set of polygons. And then I'm going to double-click this again. And then we're going to reset to 4 back to a shape of 0.5. And then here we're going to bevel and we're going to give ourselves that boundary set of polygons to control the shading from the curving area into the flat area. And we're not going to use hard normals for this situation. So let's come in here to the top and generate some geometry in this area. I'm going to press the F key to fill that with the polygon. And then I'm going to press the I key inset that a little ways to produce a boundary much like we did for the first curving area and then i'm going to press the i key again to inset but now i'm going to do something kind of cool 
hold the control key down and I'm not going to click. I'm just going to move the mouse up and down and that's going to allow me to shift that up like that. Double click this down here. In fact, I think I want to double click that and I'm going to scale S key and I'm going to scale that a little bit more. Double click this. We're still in the bevel tool, so we've still got segments of four and shape of 0.5, which is what we want. And then we can just bevel that to give ourselves some rounding. Okay, come into this top face and remove that. I'm going to press the tab key and leave edit mode. We're going to bring up the context menu and we're going to shade auto smooth. So when we come down here and we look at normals, it's automatically applied a 30 degree angle. I actually think that 30 degrees is a little bit too tight. I usually go to 40, but it's not too big of a deal. Let's come back into edit mode. We want to turn on subdivision surfaces for this. So we're going to come over, come down here, find subdivision surface. Let's set it to a value of two. Okay, so we have that nice and subdivided. Down at the bottom, let's switch over into vertex mode. I want to select this vertex and this vertex. I'm up to the vertex menu at the top, and we're going to do a vertex crease and just pull until that sharpens up. Okay. So now we're going to look at a situation where you would want to use hardened normals. Let's leave edit mode, and we're going to come over to our modifier stack, and we're going to add... Scroll down a little bit, solidify. Let's give this a larger value. Let's give it a value of one, maybe just a little bit larger, one and a quarter, something like that. Okay, the stack is important. You want to subdivide it first, and then you want to add the solidify modify so that it's actually adding solidify to the subdivided polygons. That's important for shading information here. If you do it the other way around, uh, you'll you'll get wonkiness. It'll solidify first and then it'll apply subdivision and, and you don't want it to be in that order. Let's come in and add one more modifier and this is where we are going to use the hard normals function. So we're going to come to the bevel. Let's come over and see that it's by default adding an enormous bevel and let's change this bevel to like a quarter of an inch. But by default, it's just adding more of a, of a chamfer than it is a fillet. So we're going to change the segments. Let's change the segments to four. And there we go. This is nice because that does that for us. And it just looks at an angle. So it looks at the same smoothing angle. Uh, you may want to change that to something higher in case it's you know, adding a bevel to areas you don't want. But let's look at the top. And this is going to help us to really demonstrate the hard normals function. So if we come down to shading, we see it has hard normals. And watch what happens when I turn it on. Do you see the, that jump in shading that's happening right here and across the top? In fact, let's come over here and let's look at it. If I turn hard normals off, do you see the shading shift right here? So this is where you do want to use hard normals to give that perfectly flat area. So hardened normals works fantastically when you're using a modifier to generate geometry like this. So something that is auto generating geometry and it's part of the downstream process. So when we come in and we do modeling, it's not going to interrupt or change any of the normals because they're being generated automatically downstream by a modifier.